Okay, so I have a uh, Firebase console already up. So if you haven't yet, log into the Firebase console and you'll see a screen like this. You may not have any projects if you don't have projects yet, um, but that's okay. We're gonna click add project. We're gonna give it a name. I'm gonna say analytics test. I'm gonna hit continue. Uh, enable Google Analytics for this project. You probably wanna do this. Um, Google Analytics seems to be the way that they're going for all of Google's analytics offerings. So Firebase Analytics kind of aren't gonna be its own thing, I believe. Um, so you'll wanna turn this on. So you'll need to create an account or set up an account. And you can choose to create a new property or associate this with an existing property. So in my case, I just want to automatically create a new property. I'm gonna hit create project. It's gonna go ahead and create. And while this is going, I'm gonna go ahead and run FBM flutter create analytics test. Analytics test is not a valid, oops, sorry. There we go, I had to use an underscore. Um, if you're not using FVM, the Flutter version manager, you'll just run this. You don't need the FVM bit. If you are using FVM, obviously use the FVM piece in front of the Flutter command. Uh, now we can CD into our analytics test and we can run Flutter run. Sorry, FVM Flutter run in my case. Cool. Firebase project's ready. We'll come back to that in just a moment. So now that we're here, you can actually click on the Flutter docs. These are really nice. So there is a Firebase CLI that you'll have to install. So you'll come here and you'll install it using one of these installers, or you can use NPM if you'd like. Once that's installed, you'll run Firebase login. So you can open up a new tab here, go to your project and run Firebase login. It'll prompt you to log in. I believe I'm already logged in, so it probably won't prompt me again. Maybe. There we go. Yep, already logged in, so I don't need to do anything there. Install the Flutter SDK. You've already done that. We just did that step. And then Flutter Create, we've done that too. Next, you can go into your uh, project and run Dart Pub Global Activate Flutterfire CLI. I've already done that, so I'm not going to run it again and then you can run Flutterfire configure and then your project. So in our case, it is analytics test 66 FAF. You get to choose what you want to support. We'll take them all, uh, Android, iOS, Mac, and web. Why not? Um, in the meantime, you'll see that this adds a lib Firebase options Dart configuration file to your project. And uh, we'll be able to call that. So all we really need to do is this. So we'll take this. Okay, uh, we didn't run it because we didn't have a device set up, which is fine. Uh, we can open up VS Code or your editor of choice. Go into lib main. Okay, so here in our main dot dart, we can go to our main method. We can paste our Firebase piece. Uh, this is gonna need to make the main method async, so we can await, and then we can import Okay, so in our main.dart file, we'll go to our main method. We'll go ahead and paste the code from the Firebase console. We need to import, oops, sorry. We need to make this async first. Then we can import our Firebase stuff. Oh, we can't import this yet because we actually haven't imported the dependency. So in our pubspec YAML, we'll need to add those dependencies. So if we come back to our browser, we can click on the Flutter plugins piece right here, and that'll pull up our um, list of supported plugins. And in our case, we want analytics. So if we click on analytics, make sure this Flutter tab is selected up here. And then we can run Flutter pub add Firebase analytics. In my case, I need to use FVM because I'm using the Flutter version manager. Eventually I'll stop saying that every time, but it trips people up and sometimes it trips me up. So it's good to say it. Once that completes, we should be able to add those dependencies and wire them up. Okay, dependencies look like they've finished. So we should be able to Firebase. Did we add both? No, we just added Firebase Analytics. Uh, sorry, there's one more we need to install first, which is the Firebase Core. 
So if you're using any Firebase project, you probably need the Firebase core. So we'll grab this one and do the same thing. FVM flutter pub add Firebase core. Give this a second. Okay, it looks like it, that one was much faster. And now that we're here, we should be able to import Firebase, yep, from Firebase core. We can change our options here if we want. In our case, we can use the default Firebase options. Um, and this sets up analytics. This is technically all you need to get going with your analytics. However, you probably want to add like uh, custom analytics, right? So you might want to log when a certain event happens. So you can see there's documentation on that here. Um, I will give you one piece of advice though. What I like to do is I make a file called like analytics engine.dart. I usually create a class called analytics engine. And I usually just add a bunch of static methods. You, I mean, you don't have to make them static. You can do whatever you want here. Um, but I find that static methods just end up being fairly easy to access. So I'll make a static uh, void um, uh, user logs in. And then we need to get a handle on our Firebase instance like this. So what I like to do is say something like uh, static final instance is equal to Firebase Analytics instance like this. And then you can just do something like this user dot uh, and then you can choose what you want to log. So in our case, we wanted to log that a user logs in. Uh, so there's a user sign up, view item, set user ID. Is there not a login? There we go. Log login. Uh, it takes a login method, so we can add email, maybe. Maybe that's the only one we support. Or maybe if we support login methods, we can say login method goes here, and we want to use login method here. And we know that login method is a string. Um, so you can do that. It's generally a good idea to return this value. Not that anything should necessarily wait on this login um, analytics event being logged, but sometimes you might want to. And returning it gives you the option to choose uh, between. Okay, so another thing we could do is we could add another static void. So we have user logs in. Uh, let's add one, uh, adds item to cart. Maybe that's something we really care about. We want like the item ID. So we can return instance.log something cart maybe. Yep, add to cart. Uh, and then a list of analytic event items. So we have a list, analytics event item, string, affiliation, currency. There's a lot going on here, but really what I just want is, interesting, I was hoping to see it in here, item ID. So yeah, something like item ID, item ID, and then, I don't know, maybe you do want to log the cost. So you might have like a int uh, cost. And then you could, of course, do cost. I could have swore I saw cost in there, did I not? Currency, discount, price, sorry. So you could add price, cost. And it looks like we are, oh, sorry, this needs to be async. There we go. Too many positional arguments found. This needs to be items. So something like that. Um, the key thing here is that my analytics is abstracted behind this analytics engine with one exception, which is right here. So is there a way that we can pull this into our class as well? Uh, the short answer is yes. So we can do analytics engine dot init. And maybe that returns a future. So we want to await that. Now we can go to our analytics engine static uh, future void init. Um, oops. And we can return this, clean up our imports. Great. And now nothing in our application cares that this is Firebase except for this one file. 
And the key thing here is that if we ever want to change analytics engines in the future, all we have to do is change it in one place, this file. We don't have to go change uh, analytics engines in our main.dart file, or we don't want to have to go and change our actual logging of analytics in our cart widget or our sign up widget or our login widget. It's it becomes a lot. So generally, uh, that's the practice I try to do with any third party provider. I try to abstract them out to a single class if possible, where I interface with just the things I need. And then that way, if I ever want to swap them out for something else, I just have to go back and change one class. I don't have to go throughout all of my code and handle that. Um, so what would that look like? So maybe let's do one more. Uh, the Flutter default gives us a um, little button that increments a counter. Uh, so if we do counter pressed, we can return instance.log event. And in our case, this is a custom event, right? So we can say counter pressed. And we can make this async. Oops. And format, please. Thank you. OK, so in this case, we want to log this whenever the counter is pressed. So how do we do that? So we have our main home page, right? We have an increment counter call. So what we can do right here when we increment the counter is we can call analytics engine dot counter pressed. Just like that. If we needed to wait for this, we could. We don't need to. Analytics aren't critical to this application or almost any application, really and they shouldn't block the user's experience while you're collecting analytics. So um, keep that in mind too. Your business requirements may vary, but you probably don't want to block the UI on collecting analytics data. That's a bad experience. Okay, so that's it. That's how you set up Firebase Analytics. Um, one last thing, whenever you are building for iOS, make sure you go into your pods and pod install. Uh, if you don't have your pods installed, you'll have to go in and do that as well. Um, but that sets up an analytics engine, abstracts everything out behind the analytics engine so you can easily swap out analytics providers in the future, and sets up uh, Firebase and Google Analytics together. They're one and the same now. And shows you how that you can call your analytics engine from your main Dart, your other widgets, whatever you want to build. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Thanks.